punters, welcome to another huge edition of All In. We are back on a Monday. It's a Monday afternoon. It is Everest week, and we cannot wait to get stuck in. Without further ado, Lewis Willoughby from Sky Tower Red Central, Central Rail and uh, Sky Racing. Welcome. Yes, g'day all. dot com and the uh, piece of paper dribbler, as I'm now referring to oh, yes. the eagle eyed, the eagle eyed form analyst who spotted something no one else could and got the chockies on Saturday. It was a great Saturday of racing, and now uh, it's Christmas time for punters here in Sydney. The race of the spring, I think it is anywhere. It's the Tab Everest comes up on Saturday. It's going to be a cracker, twenty eight degrees and sunny at Royal Red. We cannot ask for anything better. Wow, we yep. Uh, flying airplanes at Flemington, but they won't be flying airplanes at uh, Randwick. They'll be flying horses. Speaking of last week, Kings Gambit, Stannis Lance, Magic Time, Star Patrol, Dean Watling's best bet, Star Patrol. Welcome. Yes, and uh, what's your new nickname, Gary? A four. A four. Yeah, A <laughs> four. <A4. Yeah>, that's <laughs> good. <laughs> That's good. Uh, Louis, it's good to be here, boys. Massive, massive week. I think uh, on top of the Everest, I love the Caulfield Cup. I think it's one of the better editions and more open editions of the Caulfield Cup. And we'll touch on the Turnbull maybe a little bit. I think that's the key form line for it, but we'll go through Caulfield Cup markets soon. So I can't wait. I think it's good racing all around, boys. Yeah, beautiful. And the Guineas as well, Dino. We'll touch on that as well. Yep. Beautiful. Yeah, massive race. Sydney, Melbourne come together. First time we'll see them clash. So opinions galore. Super stuff. All right, let's go to the Everest. We'll head to Randwick Rail, position three metres to go back into the archives, the archives, and see uh, three metres for the Randwick on Everest Day. It's usually true. Mm. Yeah, it is. I think the last meeting we had was true, so maybe that spoils it, and the rail was hot, so... Interesting, but I would suggest, boys, they will make sure that this truck will be as fair as possible. It's the biggest day in Sydney. And How would they do that? Time... No, I'm joking. All right, let's kick it off. <laughs> <laughs> Don't go there. Don't go there. The Tab Everest, 1,200 metres. There's been some winners of this race in its time. There's been a bit of uh, a bit of news this morning. Alcohol Free has taken a slot, which is fantastic. Um, you got odds up in front of you there, Louis, because, you know, as fate would have it, my computer's decided to slow down on me. Of course I can, mate. With Tab, I wish I wins the $4 favourite. Think about it, four fifty. Private Eye, $6. Buenos Noches, $8. And then double figures for Hawaii, 5-0 and 11. Cylinder, 13. In Secret, 15. With Overpass, also 15. Espiona, 17. Shinzo, 17. Mazu, 26. And Alcohol Free, the one you mentioned, is a $34 chance. These odds correct at one fifty one. On the 9th of October. And remember, what are you really gambling with for free and confidential support? Call 1 800 858 858 or visit gamblinghelponline.org.au. So I wish about it $4 chance and favorite, Gano. You know. How good. Well, I'll tell you what, here, fellas, I spent a bit of time on this race looking through the jockeys, looking through what a speed map, a potential speed map will look like. And I came up with something that was pretty scary overpass, leader, on pace runners, zilch. Midfield, Ford of midfield, Mazu, Hawaii, Five-O, and Cylinder. And then beyond that, the rest is beyond midfield. Have I got that right? Have I got that wrong? Is there any other runners where it could be on pace or or lead? I, I, I think there's – I think one potentially could be alcohol-free second up. Um, I guess they would probably try offset its – 1400 meter ability and maybe roll forward. I think maybe the other one could potentially be cylinder two. He's always shown tactical speed, but um, outside of that, I think you've hit the nail on the head, Gunner. It's going to be on paper um, a race that lacks tempo. Is that going to mean that the race itself uh, on the day lacks, lacks tempo? Uh, it is worth $15 million or $20 million, whatever it is now. So just a lazy sure. five in between. Yeah. You know, stress. Yeah. <laughs> Um, uh, interesting. So we saw uh, Louis' least favourite horse of all time, and um, a good family friend of mine, the Gibsons, are actually a shareholder in in Red Zell. But uh, Louis uh, up there with Jungle Edge, um, yes, Red Zell got away with a couple of uh, errors at a slow pace. Do you think we're going to see the same thing this year? Well, yeah, possibly. And and um, if you were connections of Overpass, you'd, you'd of course be hoping for that, wouldn't you? You'd, you'd really be hoping that nothing takes you on because you know you've got a bomb proof tough and fit horse who loves to race up on speed and set sectionals that are quick and, and splits that are quick early and, and run them again late. So uh, I'm sure they'd be pretty keen. I thought maybe something like a think about it could perhaps push to be above midfield. I'm not talking, you know, mm. uh, first, second or third, 
Although the way it turns out, as you just said, with your speed map, maybe it will be first, second, or third. Well, here's here's a problem. So, runs. like you guys know this as well as as anyone else. Like you've got a leader, but someone's got to now drag you up to that leader. And yeah. you, no one wants to. You do, you don't want to be that horse or that jockey dragging up to the leader. You want someone else to do that job for you. Yeah, but who's going to do it? What What I would say is that okay, obviously we should have the best jockeys in the world riding in this race, and we do, and they're and they're smart enough to figure it out. Yeah. If they, if overpass leads and doesn't go very quick in front, if you've got a horse who you think okay, oh, it's got to run back in the field to run its best races, but they aren't going that quick, go forward because yeah. realistically, mm-hmm. you know. Sitting. Well, let's let's talk about that quickly. What jockey is going to do that? Nashra Wheeler. He's on Private Eye. He should. Yep. Max on Hawaii Five O. He'll figure it out. Yep. Correct. And Zach Lloyd's an aggressive jockey. He's on Cylinder. Yeah, I'd hope. And I think the tactics to him would be they'd be helping him, saying, "Mate, you got to go forward." Yeah. I'm sure he could figure it out himself too. But I'd I'd say that they'd be helping him there. I think the point we need to make as well is that overpass to win the race I think you got to be very careful how slow you go if you go too slow you're just going to allow these horses with a superior turn of foot to build up to you and say see a leader that horse wants to sort of build the momentum from the 600 meter mark and want to be at his top of the 400 that just means an off or the back markers have to sustain a run so it's a delicate balance uh, the biggest tick for the back markers is going to be gates I think that's going to be so crucial if you're going to be a back marker you don't want to be last you want to be three, four pairs back at worst. So I think barriers to this race are so crucial, but I think the pressure might even be on over past it. He's going to have to rate this horse perfectly. If you get it wrong, they're going to run over the top of you. If you go too slow, if you go too fast, you're going to blow yourself up. So the biggest tick, I think, for this race is that the two horses that can have tactical speed beyond overpass are trained by Waterhouse and Bot. So you know they're going to be rock hard fit and ready to, to rock and roll up and speed. Yeah. Beautiful. All right, Louis, here we are. Now it's time. Come with the hour. Come with the man. The Tab Everest for 2023. What's your all in play? Yeah, it's funny. We just spoke about um, slow tempos and and whatnot, but I'm probably the, giving the horse who's going to be last in running. <laughs> yeah. um, oh, no. I wish I went. But I, I'll tell you why. I think that uh, Overpass will set a strong tempo in front and Waterhouse Bot horses will be up there aiding it. I think we'll still get a strongly run Everest. Yep. Uh, this horse, six week between runs, back from 1,400 metres. Everything I touched on, on last week, he was huge in that Memzi. It's a great platform. Okay, you say no horses have won this second up and no horses have won this off a four-week plus break, but the sample size is too small, yep. uh, I think, yep. to be to be commenting on the perfect lead-in or the perfect profile for this race. TJ Smith winner has that huge spike at the track and distance in ratings here above anything else. Um, beat Giga Kick, who was going to probably be... Uh, favorite for this race had it not been scratched or close enough to favorite anyway. Um, so I just I think it is the best horse in the race. I think it's the best sprinter in the race at this track and trip. It's going to love the hot tempo and, and Peter and Moody knows what he's doing there. The one I will also be with because you can kind of play that way a little two horse yep. uh, two bet play is Private Eye, who I thought was huge and can only improve second up to twelve hundred meters. Has been there and done it. Has a bit of red zell about him. Pri- Private Eye has been on these. Uh, group one races for for many a season is uh, versatile, can sit forward, can sit back. I think probably runs better, ridden a bit quieter, but um, can be more forward in this. And yeah, I, I think at a good price there for Private Eye, um, maybe yep. one that just float under the radar on, uh, on race day. Good stuff. I like it, Lou. I like it. A little two bet play for the Everest. Dino, what do you got? Yeah, I love what Louis is saying about the tempo. I think we could maybe potentially overplay it a little bit. We'll get to Saturday. We forget as well that it's ran week 400 metres straight. Like, to lead all the way, you've got to be a pretty bomber horse in a big pipe of a race like that. So I respect that there might be not any tempo on um, paper, but when the race is worth how much it is, uh, I think barrier is going to be key, but I think you'll be able to run on, um, especially with the way the track will play. I love Louis push for private eye. That's my on top selection this far out. I think he's come back brilliantly. I think the best gauge for this race is I will show in, who um, obviously tag teamed with Giga Kick in that TJ Smith um, stakes. You tie that through last year's Everest um, private. I was beating a pimple by Giga Kick. Albeit he's probably a better horse in the autumn, but I think private eye's come back um, really good. Joe Pride's a great stable to get a guide off on his horses. He speaks confidently when they're going good, and he's probably the opposite when they're not. So. Um, I think of the two pride runners, Private Eye is the one that loves 1,200 metres. Yes, it gets 14, 16, but I think it's an out-and-out 1,200 metre superstar. Think about it, probably needs 14 maybe now. 
So I love Private Eye. I think he's got tactical speed, like Louis mentioned, and at the prices at the moment, um, he looks the value. Gano, just the barrier is so crucial. I'd love to see him draw four, five, or six, and I think it's his race to lose. But respecting I wish I win, it's just the price probably at the moment, Gano, that I can't dive into the $4. Yep, fair enough. I think there's only one bet. So uh, at the moment that I can have $4.30 uh, over past the place, I think it's an absolute foolproof bet because – He'll go forward. He'll sit uh, sit on speed. Not lead, sorry. She wouldn't sit on speed. Uh, Joshy Park can rate them as, as well as anyone in the game. And uh, he'll be very, very tough late. And what I'd be worried about is he'll probably have a two-length um, advantage over them as they hit the rise. And I'm just not sure if uh, if more than three of them will run over the top of him. So you're getting a good price for all of the the place as opposed to, you know, think about it or I wish I win the win. There you go, lads. That's a uh, that's an intriguing Everest. A lot to play out. Barriers will uh, will play their part for sure. But uh, I can't wait. It's going to be good. Let's go to the King Charles race. Has fallen away a little bit, I think, since the last time we spoke. Mister Brightside two fifty. Fangirl six dollars. Light Infantry eight. Zaki eight. Copper Leaker logs here now at eleven dollars. Think it over. Eleven dollars hasn't done a whole lot wrong. Think it over. Buckaroo fifteen. Golden Mile fifteen. Hoping your heart fifteen. Twenty six. The rest. Dino, kick us off with the King Charles. Yeah, it's going to be interesting speed map to identify. I think it over probably rolls forward. We've got a couple of internationals to dissect here. Um, I think we'll get a better guide on them and their targets. But I'm thinking light infantry is probably the one of all of them that's here to win the race. Buckaroo maybe has bigger targets in mind. That's the biggest uh, thing we've got to figure out with. I think you made a really good point off the top gun. It's really fallen away a little bit. Um, it's shaped to be the race of the spring, but um, Brightside looks like he's got his hoof on the till. Do you want to take 250? No. Fangirl, tactical speed, kills that horse. Um, Barry is crucial. So this far out, Louis, I don't really have any opinion or any big play. I think the one that may be over the odds could be a tissue. I think that horse is absolutely flying. And $26 and 750 a place, I think I could have a little nibble there. But I think the market's bang on this far out. Yeah, not much to add. Um, I think the thing with horses such as uh, Nugget and uh, Redina and Democracy Manifest, who we saw were really good in that Epsom, but that was them being very well suited as well at handicap conditions, and now we come back to wait for age. So uh, it was hard to identify any of them as a possible bet coming up against who is the best wet for, wait for age horse in Australia and Mr. Brightside. So, yep, 250 don't want to play. I'll stick with the think it over bet at $11 and 350 a place that I was having last week. Uh, again, it worked out this morning, and Kerry Parker said all was okay. So happy to forgive the trial. And you got to remember who won that trial as well. They're Everest hopefuls. This horse is a yep. you know, 2,000, 2,400 metre mm -hmm. horse, perhaps at his peak. So uh, yeah, uh, oh, that's okay. I'll stick with thinking it over. Wanted to mention Kovalika, who I said I wouldn't mm -hmm. think would come here, but is now uh, thanks to the $2 million Emerald Mile bonus scheme, which is paid to the horse who accumulates the most points from two races, which is. Uh, the Epsom, and this King Charles. So they've done well to keep Kovalika here for that little $2 million, $2 million extra pay packet if it's uh, able to be the winner of that series. Uh, and it went really well, as we know. So uh, it's perhaps a good chance to surprise that how well it went. No one is really talking about it for this. Something, something for the battlers, hey? Just a sneaky $2 million bonus, you beauty. Um, I found it a hard race now. I think, you know, Mr. Brightside's deserve a favourite, but let's just see how the barriers fall before we chime into anything else. Right, head to Caulfield, head south. There's a huge Caulfield Guineas uh, ahead, militarised 280, the party 350, King Colorado $8, Shalite $11, and uh, $15 the rest, including Tom Kitten. Louis, you want to kick us off with the Caulfield Guineas? Yep, so let's say it was just a race between the top two. I'd want Militarise over Step Party. So I'll, I'll make I'll put that out there and say that I'm Team Militarise over Team Step Party. Uh, however, my tip or my uh, bet in the race is actually going to be She Light, $11.335 a place. If you go back and watch the uh, prelude, I reckon She Light was as good, if perhaps not better than Step Party. So always spotted it at least a length, at some stages two lengths in running, hooked wide on the term, finished a long neck off uh, the winner, albeit running fourth. So it's made more ground to the line than Stepardi did. I think 1,600 metres will be very su suitable for this horse. Um, it should get a hot speed as always in this up to the mile. Yes, I'm I'm so happy to do this year at $11. Okay, that racing pattern's not great. 
Um, but if there's just a chance it can be a bit closer uh, this time around, I thought the run was as good, if not better, than Stapati, so I'm happy to be with it at a price. Love that. Um, I was really keen. King Colorado was a horse, I think, second up, or third up, sorry, but off that uh, freshman from the wing stakes. Um, and then was on the like long turnaround there, had the one try. I think it's going to be, what, third up now, but effectively a lot fitter. I think it's going to be the horse to beat. Wouldn't mind a bit of rain about. I don't think there is much about, mm. uh, which is be a bit of a shame. But I'd suggest the, the uh, a good track down in Victoria might still just be a little bit softer than what we probably see up here in Sydney, given the 30-odd degrees we had in the lead up to the last few Saturdays, a um, lot of racing. So King Colorado on top, but no real spoils um, and no real all-in plays there as well, Dino. Yeah, I think Mills Rice, the party, the prices are similar what they're going to be on race day. I think if you don't like the party, just be careful knocking it on Twitter. And if it wins, uh, Rick McIntosh will be up nice and early on, on Saturday morning. Pot, yeah, so be careful doing that. I think you can make a case of King Colorado, SP shorter than Mills Rice in a Golden Rose, and they're probably both better suited over 1,600 metres. But I think the market's found them all very well. Aragon, it's an outstanding race. I think our 1,200-metre crop for three-year-olds are no good. But I think our 1,600-metre crop here, especially King Colorado's to party militarise, I think they're all top-notch. So um, like what Louis doing, there's value in the market at Sheila, um, just directly proportional to the party's run as well. So, But we'll move on, Gano. No real opinion for me. Super stuff. Uh, head to the Mind Power now. Came out the other day and having a chat about this um, on SEN. And the question was posed to me Would Alligator Blood win another Group One uh, after his success? And I thought, no. But now you've lined up in a uh, Mind Power that looks, well, pretty weak and lacks depth. And, well, I might flip the script and say, yeah, of course he can. Like, this race is just soft and he's got to beat a stable mate in just fine. Find out with a voice sync. Alligator Blood, $2.30, $4 just fine. Joyous, $4.50. Gold Trip, $6, surely not. Uh, Lindemann, $13. Nonconformist, $13. Duke to Cessa, quick backup would have to be $17. Zyrax, $17. Louis, kick us off. You've heard my thoughts. Yeah, I, um, I, yeah, you know, I, I want to make this show exciting and interesting and, you know, <laughs> everyone's got a bet, blah, blah, but I, I don't know. I don't know with this race. <laughs> what do they do? They're the stable mates. They both race on speed. Uh, when we were in the green room, Gano, we were talking about this uh, at length. The green room. <laughs> uh, are they going to, you know, they're not going to cut themselves up in front, surely, and set it up for something else? Um, alligator blood on the way to Cox Plate, just on the just fine on the way to, you know, who knows, some long races, 2,400, 3,200 perhaps. Um, so I just, I don't know what to do with them, and they and they really dominate the market. Dew Ace wants further again. Gold Trip surely won't be there, as you said. And then the $13 double figure brigade, I, I don't think they are the gravy of the top two. So I really don't know what to do with the might and power, Dino. Yeah, I love the race betting wise. I think Just Fine's a better horse than Alligator Blood uh, at 2,000 metres. Oh, I love this setup. 2,400 back to 2,000 metres. I I think this horse is the, the horse of the spring. The, the figures that this horse is producing uh, are elite. Um, you said know that he's the next Might and Power, and he's found himself in a race. It's oh. called the Might and Power, so I like that I little think, narrative. I think I, showed, I think I said something along the lines of shades of. <laughs> you, you, you told me anyway, anyway. You go on. I go. I go for a run around Centennial Park, and I've got shades <laughs> of Chogi, but I'm not him. <laughs> <laughs> you don't need to be. You can only be sort of. You don't have to be full Might and Power to win this race. I just think the market's way too short. Alligator Blood. I just love. 2,000 metres, which is fine. I think Alligator Blood gets 2,000, but I think yeah. he was gifted that race last start. I think he's a better 1,600 metre horse. So I just love I just love Just Fine. I think it's such a good horse, um, and I think they should be close in the market. The real question is, is that is are they actually going to line up against each other? Well, I think so, uh, because um, TC's book for Alligator Blood and Geordie Charles' book for Just yeah. Fine. So you, you would like to think that, given they're both different book, jockeys are booked, that they would. And the, I just and think the, Sable aren't, the Sable aren't afraid of doing that. No, exactly. So I just think... Um, In the big races, prices, anyway. At the prices, they should be nearly even favourites with each other. So I think $4 just finds an absolute gift. I'll lean that way in the Mountain Power. Wow, wait, an absolute gift. There you go, punters. Uh, question for you, who leads? Alligator Blood. Alan will be on the phone just... Oh... No, I think, yeah, just fine. Sorry, I'll, I'll switch that around. Just fine. Okay. Oh, bless him. 
All right. <laughs> we'll go to the Turak. Amelia's Jewel, $2. Antino, $5. Pride of Jenny, 11 Golden Mile, 15 Hit a shock, 15 Pinstripe, 15 The inevitable for Bear and his crew, $15. Uh, Louis' old favourite there, Attrition, $17. And uh, Barbie's Fox, 17 Pounding, 17 Louis, how do you see the Turak handicap playing out? This is a cracking race. I've always loved the Turak. I think it's one of um, the races of the Melbourne Carnival for mine. I've always loved watching it. I love doing the form. It's a cracking little handicap where weights and draws and speed is so important. They often go very hot here over the mile at Caulfield. I think favourite is too short and I don't like Antino at $5. And then in which case, if you're happy to pot them like I am, you're getting a unreal price about anything else you want to back. I'm... Um, <laughs> I'm tempted to give you four again. Yes, do it. I, no. I'll give you three instead. I'll cut my. I'll cut. Luke will have a. Off. Luke's just got back from Japan. Have a field day with this. He'll be pumped. <laughs> He'll be prime, ready to go. Fresh off a of freshen up. He can't yeah. wait. Let's I'll go. Yes. Off. I'm going to go pinch one. and the inevitable at fifteen and attrition yep. at seventeen dollars. So they're my three plays in the bet, and I'll I'll run through them quickly. Pinch striped. Um, it was huge winning last start. That was the group two fan. It had to swoop the whole field there at the Valley, came from near last to do so. Long run, held on late to win well. I think a freshen for its suits, it's often run well before off gaps between runs has pinstriped. And I think they've finally just figured out the, the little key with it. In winning form is good. And it's going to appreciate this really hot tempo if it's sitting midfield or behind. Uh, very similar story, the inevitable. It didn't have much luck there. In the Epsom at Randwick, it was going really well. It started in the market. Clearly, it was there to run a, a big race and, and be a top three chance. Just got a bit lost back in the ruck and held up behind, behind horses at a crucial stage. Uh, and Attrition, just kind of similar story there with uh, with Pinstripe. They're racing well amongst each other. I think it's going well, and $17 is a huge price. Others, seriously, I could include, I thought Barbie's Fox was huge in the Epsom. Pounding uh, wasn't as good, but I think back to Melbourne would suit for it. A horse like Amenable, what it's SP so short and favourite and did nothing and then pulled up no issues. I haven't been able to chase down if the stables come out and said what was wrong there, but you've got to respect the SP and the fact it was going really well. You wouldn't probably be shocked to see it bounce back and run a big race here if everything, uh, if they identified an issue and now it's been fixed. So, yeah, great race, great, great race. I'm going to be those uh, with those at a price. Beno, what do you got for us? Yeah, I love it, Lou. Good a passion. I think Miller's Jewel wins the race. The betting the race is inevitable, the place, around that 350 price. I think that is one of the better bets of the weekend. It had absolutely no luck, to say the least, there uh, last start in the Epson. I think it gets clear air, it wins the race. It was dead set, stuck beyond horses, running the fastest last 600, last 400 of the meeting. So I think that's a great bet. $3.50 around that price, a place, the inevitable gunner. Yeah, if you ever want me to spill a secret, just uh, time me out. Maybe watch replays of the, in the inevitable last start because fair income, it was torture. It was absolute torture. And poor old Dave Perez, he'll be back. He'll bounce back in big, big. Is he dropping the book? Yeah, he's, he's booked. Yeah. I love it. Come up the hour. Yeah, let's go, Davey. Now's your time. Uh, you're getting $4.11 at the moment with the Green Cafe with Tab. So I am very, very keen the inevitable the place and that brings me to my all-in play of the week it'll be the inevitable the place at four dollars and uh, 11 cents um into overpass around that three dollars or four dollar mark i can't remember what it was but you're getting around let's just call it a clean 15 dollars is my all-in play of the week louis what do you got place, the place multi i love place, it place multi. how good how good oh, i'm gonna go I wish I win Tab Everest as the all-in play. I think it's the best horse in the race, the best sprinter, and should be winning this year's edition. Good stuff. Well, my best all-in play is just fine in the might and power. I do want to mention one. There's no market out, but uh, King of Sparta in the Sydney Stakes, I think it will be incredibly hard to beat if the market's not out yet. But just fine. Best Six all-in bucks. play of the weekend. Love that. Update, yeah. uh, the inevitable and overpass, $17.63, the double. There you go, punters. Righto, it's been good fun. Um, massive week of racing ahead. You can check out all Dean's stuff at Dean, uh, DeanWatling.com. And, Louis, you've just yes. got to go to Channel 528 and 526 to see all your stuff. Yep, you'll catch me um, in the comments of the YouTube video defending myself. Yeah, so, Georgie Moore will be into you again, just as usual. Georgie, Georgie, keep going. I know that's Dean's old man, so thank you, Dave. Appreciate all your work. <laughs> 
Make sure you're tuning into the Sydney set on a Saturday morning as well in my ste into a one winner out of 10 you never know. Bye. 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 Bye